there and welcome back to another Wi-Fi Sheep Tech video with me Tom and a special welcome to all our brand new subscribers who have just joined us since the last video. I have to admit we've had a bit of an influx so if you have recently subscribed and you're watching this for the first time thank you and a very warm welcome to the channel. Now early this month, this month being November 2018, I went to the Milton Keynes Raspberry Pi Jam. Now many of you that are regular to the channel will think so what, you go to Raspberry Pi Jams, you talk about them now and again, what's so special? Well, the Milton Keynes Jam is actually held at Bletchley Park, which during World War II was used as the British military computer base and was home to one of the first government computers, Colossus. So for me, the ability to take one of my machines, in this case this BBC Micro Model B, go down to there and actually exhibit, sort of ticked a bit of a personal goal. You see, I have now managed to exhibit at both the Centre for Computer History in Cambridge and the National Computer Museum at Bletchley Park. So for me, it's a bit of a tick box. It's something I've managed to achieve. Anyway, I preferred this machine along with one or two other exhibits and I headed down to Milton Keynes. Now, where I am here in Shropshire, that's the other side of the country. So this was a bit of a jaunt to get there. And on my way down, always going swimmingly, until I managed to join the M1 motorway, this was the other side of the Midlands, so I was heading south towards London, and I realised I hadn't packed the monitors for the computers. Yeah, um, that was a bit of a mistake. But if you're going to forget your monitors, then I suppose the best place to forget them is if you're heading to a National Computer Museum. They're likely to have something that would fit. And they did. As we were being hosted in the 1980s classroom, which was a classroom full of BBC micros, identical or near identical to my own, they offered me a cub monitor. Now, under normal circumstances, that would be fine. As you may remember from this channel, one of the first videos I did was repairing a cub monitor. However, this particular Model B has an NULA graphics card fitted, which means it outputs in analog RGB, not the required digital TTL logic that the cub monitors need. So basically this wouldn't plug in and it needed a SCART enabled RGB television. Luckily they managed to find one and we actually ended up plugging this Model B into the 4K flat screen in the classroom area, which was um, quite something. And actually the picture quality, to be fair, was very good considering we've plugged in a virtually 40 year old machine into a brand new 4K television. It actually did quite well and it didn't look too bad. So today I'm going to set back up this Model B and show you a few things about what's particularly special about it, what I've done and some of the software that I custom wrote for the event. For the Pi Jam, I wanted to show the insides of the Model B as it has a number of add-ons fitted. This meant bringing the keyboard forward to reveal the EEPROMs hidden underneath. These included the main operating system, the BBC Basic Interpreter, the disk filing system drivers, their newer software such as the Turbo MMC flashcard drivers and the drivers for the NULA graphics card. This Model B is still fitted with its original MOS Technologies 6502 CPU clocked to 2 MHz, 32K of dynamic RAM split into two upper and lower banks of 16K and interestingly an Intel floppy controller chip copyrighted 1978. However, the machine's inbuilt PSU has a date stamp of 1982, which is about right for the time of manufacture of this computer. Newly installed this year is the NULA card that replaces the original chip, expanding the BBC Micro's colour palette from 8 to over 4,000 colours. The setup also includes my modified Amiga external 3.5 inch floppy drive. Also, the setup uses a Turbo MMC card reader, which connects to the Beeb's user port. And a Pi Tube Direct module, that allows the Raspberry Pi to interface via the BBC's tube interface and acts as a switchable second processor for the system. For video output, we'll be using a custom 6-pin DIN to SCART RGB connector. The DIN end plugs into the RGB port on the back of the computer and the multiple ribbon leads plug under the computer. The advantage of using SCART is we can use a newish flat screen display. Most will work with older hardware such as 8-bit computers. So, all powered up, now have a bit of luck, turn the machine on and it should work fine. 
yeah, you don't get a second beep. No idea why, but you just do not get a second beep in this setup. So uh, just get the one beep. There we are. So we're now up and running. You'll notice that because the Rusty Pi Zero has now come on stream for the Pi Tube Direct device, instead of reading BBC Computer 32K, it's now reading Acorn Tube 6502 and 64K. So the Pi Tube Direct directly boots as a second co-pro processor. Uh, you'll notice the Turbo MMC has loaded in underneath. Uh, that's the MMC flashcard device, so that ROM is on board. And BASIC has loaded under that. And so we're now waiting for a command in BASIC. So if I take my Elite Disk, now this particular disk image is available for free from Ian Bow's website. He was one of the original co-authors of Elite. And you can download that. And what I need to do is put the machine into disk mode. So we say disk. And then we'll just catalog the drive quickly. Make sure we're working. There we go. Now if I shift break, it will now load in to Elite. And it asks you what version you want. So we obviously want the bottom one there, which is the 6502 second processor edition. It's quite clever that this actually has the master Elite Model B side RAM and the original release of Elite. So I'll click second processor. And there we go, so you get the splash screen, which is, I think, is unique to the um, CoPro edition. Star Wars esque. Anyway, right, let's get going, shall we? There we go. I can't remember how to play this now. Um, so it's more colourful than the original, it's certainly a lot faster. There's a few other graphical changes like changing of fonts and things like that. I'm trying to find the space station, where have I come from? Ah, there we are. But you can see it's running, and this is just a stock Model B with a Raspberry Pi, Pi Tube Direct added. Oh, and another craft, so it's a lot busier as well. So we've got double the RAM and double the processors working on this. So it's actually running very fast indeed. Whoa, someone's not happy. I destroyed something, there you go. Usually I do this demonstration, I last five seconds and that's about it. Where is he? Oh, slow, come on. Uh-oh. Ah, damn it. There we go. Well, that's a demonstration of that anyway. So we'll just hit break. One of the things I did for the Milton Keynes Raspberry Pi Jam was I wrote a custom program, which I took along to run on this. Uh, basically, they had a theme running, which was fireworks. Uh, as being November, it was around bonfire night. So... Uh, everyone was encouraged to write or create something around fireworks. So I did a little fireworks simulator called Sparkworks, which I wrote in BASIC, and was going to take along uh, to run on this machine. Now, this machine has the 
uh, color card which replaces the ULA unit in it. So it's an N ULA color unit. We've dealt with these before. Um, this one has the uh, unit fitted for the Model B, which is easier to fit than the master system. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to turn that on. But before that, we need to turn the coprocessor off. So to do that, we need to call the PIOP. So we say FX or star FX 151, comma, 230, comma, and then 14. Now if I control and break, you'll see the CoPro has switched off and we've gone back to BBC Computer 32K, which is fine, which is what we want. So leaving it in Turbo MMC mode, we need to go and find where the programs are. Uh, the first thing we need to do is set up the color palette. We call up the separate disk images by saying DIN. Uh, we say DIN 8 and then we can catalog that. It'll bring up this, which is the uh, palette utility. So what we need to do is we need to boot the new graphics card and it comes with a palette tool for the NULA uh, and this is it. So we can load this with a shift break, hopefully. There we go. So it loads in mode two, gives you the 16 colors you can then um, customize. If I hit load, I did create a custom palette and you can see it up here called Spark. So we ask it to load Spark. And you'll notice the color palette has now readjusted. Black has now gone to a blue color. We've got a gray, an orange, a dark green, all the sort of colors we didn't normally have with the BBC Micro. So that's great, so we can quit that now. DIN 5. Ah, there we go, yes, DIN 5. So we've got a boot file, Spark, which is the basic, and then we've got two graphics screen dump files, which are here. So if I now shift break into this, there we go. So this is a Spark Works, which has been rushed through and doesn't work at all well, but it's here uh, under the Wi-Fi sheet banner. So we've, we've managed to digitize the little Wi-Fi sheet emblem. And this is, uh, this is running in mode one. Uh, this is now mode two. So the idea is that you have a series of numbers, you've got a firework display and you can make a firework happen. So if I press one, I shoot a rocket, like so. I press two, gives me a Catherine wheel. And I press three, and I have the sort of sparkly ground candle fireworky things. And I can actually mix these and customize them at different times. There we go. It's not perfect because I've got this artifacting happening, which I wasn't able to clean up in time. So you've all got these sort of permanent explosions in the sky. Uh, how this works is it's palette shifting. So it's loading one custom screen dump image, and then we're changing the palette all to one color, uh, with the exception of the rocket, which is a, a text character drawn on screen. So that's a text character, but the explosion is always there it's just you can't see it because the different elements of the explosion are switched to the same colour as the background. Same with the Catherine wheel. It is actually constantly there in the drawing and hence why it artefacts around here. So it's not perfect, but um, it's a reasonable. It does the job. There we go. And then if we hit escape, takes us back to the main title screen. So yeah, overall a generally enjoyable day, despite the mishaps on um, my part, but uh, we got around that. Now I'm hoping to be able to release the Sparkworks software along with a few other BBC Micro projects on a downloadable freeware disk image very shortly from my website. Now the plan is if you don't have an original BBC Micro to run it on, the file will be available to run on an emulator and I'm actually hoping to get it working in browser so you won't even have to download or run anything it'll just run straight there in your web browser i will keep you posted on that probably looking somewhere in the new year now but uh, we'll see how we go right well once again thank you so much for joining me here on wi-fi sheep if you haven't already do not forget to like and subscribe and as ever i'll see you real soon until next time bye for now Thank you.